Russian Defense Minister is going to visit North Korea later this week. The minister, along with his delegation, will also be joined by a Chinese official. This will mark the first visit to the country since the pandemic started. While in Pyongyang, the sides will celebrate the 70th anniversary of Victory Day. The delegation of Communist Party of China will be led by Li Hongzhong. Both Moscow and Beijing, for long, have extended their support to the nuclear-powered country. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has been set steadfast in his support for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The United States has also accused North Korea of providing Russia with missiles and ammunition. Last year, North Korea only resumed some trade with China and allowed China's new envoy to take up his position this year. Now, according to experts, Russia is expected to ask for more artillery support from North Korea and in return Pyongyang may ask Russia's assistance on reconnaissance satellites or nuclear submarines. David Dunn is a professor of International Politics, University of Birmingham. He is also a security and defense expert from the United Kingdom. Professor David, welcome to the, bro uh, to the program at, at this hour. And uh, what do you think about the timing of Russia and China touring North Korea? And what is the message that the two governments are trying to send to other countries, especially the United States, Japan and South Korea? Well, the timing is to do with the 70th anniversary of the end of the Korean War. But the Chinese and the Russians are clearly using this opportunity to send a signal about uh, their united approach uh, in terms of the, the, the small coalition of former communist uh, states that, that uh, have seek solidarity in their isolation. Uh, the, the fact that, uh, that they are making a big event about this in part shows their, certainly Russia's case, international isolation. It shows, uh, so they're, they're trying to show that they have friends on the world stage, that there is solidarity uh, beyond the, 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 uh, uh, the, the block of the, of the two states themselves. And they're seeking to do that by aligning themselves, which the, the biggest pariah state uh, on the planet. Uh, right. And of course, as, you, as your report indicates, there may also be practical aspects to that. Uh, Russia, due to the sanctions regime, is running short of missile parts and artillery pieces. And North Korea is one of the few places that could supply Russia uh, with those weapons. Professor David, the North Korean government has been conducting several missile tests and drills in the uh, uh, South China Sea, and we already know that uh, the leader in North Korea, Kim Jong-un, has said that he may use nuclear warheads uh, in, the, in, in the coming months or in the coming years. What do you think this threat, or what impact will this threat have in the long run? Again, what we see is an alliance of countries who are prepared to make nuclear threats. The whole invasion of Ukraine uh, by Russia was done under the umbrella of Russia's nuclear capability. Uh, they said, we're invading Ukraine, and if you intervene, if you support Ukraine, even if you give weapons to, to Ukraine, you run the risk of us using nuclear weapons against us. And here we have a similar regime in North Korea uh, that is uh, you know, economically and morally bankrupt, and yet uses uh, all its resources to, to build nuclear warheads and rockets to try, try and threaten its neighbors. But the very fact that Russia has used nuclear intimidation reinforces the idea that North Korea can try to make diplomatic gains by also using threats of nuclear violence. So what we have is, a, is a, an alliance of nuclear bullies uh, in the, the relationship between Russia and um, North Korea. The fact that China is supportive of that by attending the same ceremony right. is uh, right. disappointing in the way in which the West had hoped that China would rein North Korea in. But we have a situation whereby international politics has taken a rather nasty turn, whereby nuclear threats are now part of the language of international relations. Professor David, finally, and this is in brief, 
The two Koreas have been at loggerheads for quite some time now. Won't this visit by China and Russia exacerbate the already fraught relationship going forward? Uh, again, uh, the the, uh, the threats that North Korea has made against South Korea and ag against Japan and other up, uh, states in the region has made South Korea much more anxious. The fact that that, that uh, nuclear threats have been made in Europe and elsewhere has meant that, that the the South Koreans have sought greater security guarantees from the Americans. And indeed, this month, a nuclear-armed American submarine visited South Korea for the first time in four decades, showing the degree to which tensions in the area have been exacerbated by the return of nuclear threats to the international system. Security and defense expert, Professor David Dunn, thank you very much for all your inputs and for talking to We On World is One today. Thank you. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.